Foam is a truly great material for arts, crafts, and even construction, whether it be polystyrene, high density, or generic styrofoam. But if you've ever worked with it, you'll know that it's very challenging to carve with its own unique challenges, and it can even pose a risk to your health if you don't know what you're doing. So in this video, I'm gonna show you three methods to cutting foam, and I'll talk about the advantages and disadvantages of each method. I'll also be showing you how to keep your workspace tidy and safe from all the debris that foam creates. Welcome back to Fritz Hoppy on YouTube. So today I'm actually working on a life-size miniature pincher, a little pup sculpture. You can see the head here and uh, it is life-size but they're very small dogs, okay? So this is actually a solid block of clay but as you know, or maybe you don't know yet, but you probably will know if you ever try this out, this clay is very heavy. I mean, very heavy, you know. So if I'm going to sculpt this dog's body, I'm probably not going to sculpt it out of a solid block of clay. To save some weight and to save some cost, because I don't want to use up all of my clay, I'm actually going to carve a little body out of styrofoam. So whether you're working on an art project or you have some other reason that you want to cut styrofoam, Today I'm going to show you three ways that you can cut foam. Each way has its advantages and disadvantages. So I will go over all of that and explain to you um, why I choose a certain method over another. Be sure to subscribe if you haven't yet. I'll be putting out a lot more tutorials and tips and other videos about my process. And if you enjoy this video or find it helpful, hit the like button by clicking the thumbs up at the bottom of the screen. So let's get started here. So let me begin with the most basic and cheapest method for cutting foam, which some of you might have already done. Uh, a serrated knife and a rasp. Now obviously anyone can pick up these tools you know, in a store and get started cutting right away, but um, I'm just, I don't want to make a mess here. And we'll talk about that here in a second. But, um, you know, it's pretty easy to use these tools to cut through the foam. Um, this is what we're going to talk about, those. What happens when you do this, or use the rasp. Here's the rasp in use. Uh, this does make a terrible mess. That's why I'm showing you this clip, uh, me doing this over a trash can. But I'll talk about this more here in a second. Um, right now, I just want to show you what these basic tools are and uh, how to use them. And... Uh, these are really handy and you can really do a lot with a rasp like this. And please stick with me because later on in the video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to keep uh, everything clean. But right now, let me show you some footage that I actually took earlier in the winter uh, to explain the problem with using these tools. So before I take you back in the studio, uh, let me show you the problem here. Um, if you use a rasp or knife when you're trying to cut foam, you get a lot of this, this stuff, and it loves to stick to everything. The problem is if you're using monster clay, J-Mac clay, or any other oil-based clay, this stuff likes to stick to that clay. And what you have to do is you have to pick out every little piece of foam. And uh, there really is no need to have this like floating around your shop. It can create a huge mess where it's all over the air, it's all over your tools, it's all over you. So anyway, let's get back in the studio. Let me show you uh, what kind of foam I like to use and what kind of tools I like to use. You might remember these clips from when I made the fawn sculpture uh, where I showed myself using the bandsaw. And this is a quite large bandsaw definitely the best tool for precision you can even get smaller tabletop band saws uh, here's a little photo of one they're much cheaper and they take up less space but that's really the huge disadvantage with the band saw is you need a lot of space it does create a little bit of a mess but you know you can control the mess but you get great precision i would highly recommend it 
getting a bandsaw or practicing on one if you haven't yet just be very careful um, you should already have training with one if not get some training and uh, watch your fingers <laughs> because they can be dangerous but definitely the best tool for precision uh, just takes up a lot of space and they're a little pricey now for the third technique, I'm going to dwell on this one for just a little bit here because um, you have options if you want to try this method. And I'm going to bring out some more old footage also involving the sculpting of the fawn. And uh, this is for the hot foam cutter. And this is the nice one. These cost anywhere from 130 to 180 bucks. Some are even upwards of $200, you know, for a set. But this has a trigger where you send an electrical current through the wire or metal part and then it instantly heats up the foam. So you have extreme control over everything while you're cutting and it comes with different forms of wires and lengths and wire for like really thick foam and wire for thin foam. And it's really amazing what you can do with this. Uh, the only concern is the toxic fumes and this goes for any type of hot foam cutter. You definitely want to wear a respirator, some sort of mask. I'm going to talk about that more here in a second. Now that I've covered all the more difficult methods and costly, because you kind of have to balance those things out, I'm now going to talk about probably the easiest and most inexpensive way to cut this styrofoam. And that here is with this very handy tool. It's an electric foam cutting pen, but unlike the last one, um, this one is actually much more inexpensive and it's a lot smaller. Now, you're not going to get the same result as you would from the you know, $180 kit where it's got the different types of foam cutters, you know, but you can still accomplish the same thing with this, okay? This is a good sized chunk of foam here. And if you can look there, you can see that it's actually going to fit just perfect. You know, we got enough wire here that this is going to heat up and cut right through that. And then all I'll do is I'll trim around the edges to kind of, you know, make it uh, curved around the sides. More like the body will be of the dog. And then uh, touch it up with this. Now there is one thing you need to know. I'm going to be doing this outdoors because this creates a byproduct of toxic fumes because you know we're literally melting through this styrofoam so uh, let's take a look at how I'm gonna cut this styrofoam with this little inexpensive tool so all I do here is I plug in the uh, foam cutter and it starts heating up this is different than the last one I just showed you because with that cutter um, the other one you pull a trigger and it sends an electrical current through the wire so you can kind of control when it heats and when it does not heat but this one it's just hot as long as you have it plugged in so be really careful of that you don't want to start a fire um, as you can see I am outside here uh, we have a nice day finally so <clears throat> I always want to cut this outside when I can because of the fumes uh, you're gonna see that here in a second and you'll definitely want to wear one of these uh, because those fumes are very toxic because what it's going to do is it's going to melt the foam okay so it's going to have all that um, residue and smoke and you do not want to breathe that in so this should be heated up by now it only takes a few minutes so let's go ahead and uh, you can watch me cut this with the more affordable foam cutter I forgot to mention that this actually does have an on and off switch. Um, I forgot about that feature. So you don't need to unplug it, you just flip the switch on and off. But still, be very careful of that. Now this foam cutter is a lot less expensive, but as you can see, it takes a lot longer to cut through the foam. I have to really go slowly and uh, let it kind of heat up as it goes through. It's just not hot enough or doesn't have enough current going through it to cut through the foam really fast like um, the more expensive cutter was. You know, so this one's like 20 bucks. 
versus a kit that's $150, give or take a little bit. And you kind of get what you pay for. So, you know, you just have to make those kind of decisions if you want to try this method for cutting styrofoam. So far, you've probably realized that uh, there's really no perfect way to cut foam because there's always some sort of disadvantage. Uh, but at the end of the video here, I'm going to give you some really valuable information on keeping everything tidy and clean. Because for me, that is the biggest challenge of all. It's just keeping everything clean when cutting foam. You might have noticed that I got a little bit impatient at the end and started to kind of uh, move it back and forth, to try to get it to cut faster. Um, but, but I always like to go back through and trim up the edges because remember, I kind of want to round off the sides of the foam. Um, in a perfect world, the, everything would be rounded. You know, but I really just want to take up space, you know, instead of having like that solid block of clay. So it doesn't need to be 100% perfect. It just needs to be the right shape and, uh, you know, enough that it takes up the core area of the clay instead of me, you know, cutting into a 10 pound block of clay. Now let me show you the odd trick to rounding off those edges without making so much of a mess. Now I will give you a little bonus tip. Um, you still can use the rasp, but just do it over a trash can. And I like to use uh, my foam cutter, you know, to kind of rough it out a little bit and trim around the edges so that I can minimize the amount of uh, foam dust. I guess that's what you'll call it um, that I create <clears throat> because that does kind of make quite a mess in the shop. It doesn't need to be perfect either because um, for what I'm doing here is I'm covering it with clay. I'll show you that here in a second. I like to get rid of some of these little strings that appear uh, after I melt the foam. Um, I don't know, it polystyrene when you melt it, it just kind of creates a interesting spider web of a mess. Now as a bonus tip, if you do have to use the rasp just a little bit, you know, I did this over a trash can, but what can really help uh, clean up the mess, I set this down really carefully without letting that debris spread around, and I went and washed my hands, and what I did is I got some damp paper towels. I'm going to go ahead and just very carefully wipe this off, okay? And uh, when you dampen the paper towel, it's actually going to pick up a lot of that residue that's on the styrofoam piece that I was uh, shaving with the rasp. I can also use the damp paper towels on the rasp itself. What I like to do though is I like to go over this, maybe run it under a faucet with some water, and uh, just be sure that I pick up all those last little pieces there. You can even paint it with varnish or something too if you want, uh, just to be sure that none of these little pieces get in the clay. Using a faucet with running water works best for the rasp because that thing is almost impossible to clean. And when you wash the styrofoam itself, uh, I always leave it out to dry. I want to make sure it's dry completely so that there isn't any moisture locked inside. Finally, once I have what I want with this styrofoam, uh, me personally, I usually cover it with hot clay. I actually went back and uh, chopped at this just a little more of that tool and then stuck some wires in there so that the body could move uh, like so. And that uh, helps out a lot because I want to give a little bit of action and life to the sculpture. After 25 minutes, you can see that that clay <clears throat> heated up really nicely. And I want to be careful not to burn myself here because uh, that hurts really bad. Because the clay will just keep burning you if you get it on your skin. In the comments below, please tell me if you've tried any of these methods for cutting styrofoam. And if you have, which one you prefer. If you're cutting foam for the purposes of sculpting with oil-based clay like I am, be sure and watch the videos on heating up the clay safely if you haven't watched them yet or go ahead and do some research. 
uh, because the stuff can burn if you don't heat it up correctly. Now if you're looking for any new tools uh, for cutting foam, just do some of your research. I put links below to all the different options. So take some time, read through them, and start small if you're not sure about something. I have to do some repairs from the flooding that happened, so I'll be hitting the road for the next few weeks, but there'll be a few short videos coming out, so be sure to watch those. If you found this video helpful, hit that like button by clicking the thumbs up, and subscribe if you haven't. Thanks for watching, I will see you all next time.